Today there are literally hundreds of domain extensions you can use and new ones are being added all the time. So which one should you go for? In this video I'm going to teach you exactly what you need to know. If you're wondering if you should go with a .net, a .com, a .org or any of the other hundreds of domain extensions out there. So the first thing you need to think about is what is the general purpose of the website? If it's a website you're going to build to make some money, if it's a blog or a personal site or your business or whatever, in most of the cases you should always go for a .com domain. This is because people trust a .com domain more and many statistics and studies show that people will think that your website is a .com if they're trying to remember how to find your website in Google. But if you are working with an organization or a nonprofit, an NGO, or if you're building open source projects, you should probably choose a .org domain. That's what these domains are for. But for all other purposes, always just go with a .com domain if you have the opportunity to do so. Up here I have a link to a video I did recently about how to find those really, really good .com domains that aren't taken yet. So if you're really struggling here and you can't find that perfect .com domain for your website, check that out because I have some tricks that you need to see. So what about the SEO aspect of things here? Does it matter if you choose a .com or .net or .org or whatever you can come up with? Not so much. Google has come out very clearly and told us that they don't care which one you're using unless we're talking about a country specific top level domain like let's say .de for Germany or .es for a Spanish audience or for Spain. So Google is not giving preference to a .com over a .net or .org in the search rankings. But that's when we're talking about Google's algorithms. When we're looking at how people actually react when they see these domains in the search result page, we find that people trust the .com domains more. So even though you're not getting a technical boost in SEO from choosing a .com domain, you will get more clicks on your website when people are seeing that you own the .com domain and not the .net or .org. And when we are talking about SEO, we're not only thinking about the technical algorithms with Google, we're thinking about how to get the most traffic from the search engines. So the user behavior plays a big role here. And that's why I think you should always go with the .com, even though Google is not giving them preference over a .net. But when we are talking about a specific region or a country, if you're only targeting German visitors, I would go for a .de domain. And that's because people in that region will recognize that as the local domain extension. They will see that you are a website from Germany and since they're looking for content in German and for Germans, that will work just fine. And if you're targeting an Australian audience or a UK based audience, I would always still go with the .com domain over the .au and the .co UK. Because remember, even though that's your target area, you will still have a lot of eyeballs from the US or from India or anywhere else in the world. Even here in Denmark, where I come from, most of us are searching for English content because there's just not that much content in our original language. Remember, we're only 5 million people and there's a ton of small countries like Denmark where we just go for English content most of the time. But even if you are only servicing, you can say, people within the UK, if you're a local business, even so, I would also go with the .com because people don't need to see in the domain extension that you are specifically from the UK. They will still trust the .com domain more and give it more clicks and more attention if you own the .com because when they see that .com domain, they will know that you are the official website for your company and they will also click it more just because people love the .com for some reason. So what about all these new creative domain extensions such as .co or .blog or whatever? See, in 2002, the ICANN organization opened up to hundreds of new domain extensions. The ICANN organization is the organization who handles all these domain extensions. So today we have more than 200 new domain extensions we can use besides the original ones such as .com, .net, .org and so on. 
and many of these are cool creative names and in some cases it's a good idea to go with those if it really goes well with the name of the domain itself. And some people also say that the new .co domain is the new .com domain. Because so many of the .com domains are taken, people are starting to treat the .co domain as if it's the new .com. The .co domain was originally designed for a Colombian audience. But since Google could see that people were clicking these websites outside Colombia and people were not thinking that this was a Colombian website, they were just treating it sort of as a .com domain. So Google will not think that your website is for Colombians only, even though it's a .co. Since Google is not giving preference to a .com technically, you can still go for all these domain extensions and still rank like anywhere in the world. But remember that 15 to 20% of people find it easier to remember a .com domain. And there can also be some copyright issues. Let's say you get the perfect domain name as a .co. Maybe somebody else will own the .com domain for the same name or they will buy it eventually and build a website or a business that's similar to what you're doing. That'll be a big problem because now people will think they are the official one and you're just like a scam or you're just a copy or you were not there first. So think about copyright issues and try the best you can to nail a good .com every time. So what about if your dream .com domain is taken and you really want this name but it's just off the market. Somebody else registered it maybe a long time ago and even though they're not using it for anything, which is the case for most of the domains that are just sitting there with a register, you cannot get it, right? Sometimes you can, but it can be really stressful. Unfortunately, there's no easy way to get a hold of the owner behind the .com domain name. This is because when they register the domain or when you register a domain, it's easy for a few extra bucks to get what we call domain privacy. That means that it's not possible to look up the domain and find the phone number or the email address and so on of who's behind the domain name. But if you can do that, I'll show you here how you can go about that. Because in a few steps, we can quickly see if that information is available. So you can go to whois.net to look up the domain. I mean, it's worth a try, but nine out of 10 times you won't find anything here. Let's just try amazon.com. Let's just see how it normally looks. Normally you won't get anything. It'll just say something like, uh, contact email abuse complaint at markmonitor.com. This is just one of many emails that have been masked because they have domain privacy and they don't want to get a ton of emails. But give it a try. I mean, sometimes the owner will not have domain privacy on the domain and maybe you'll be able to find the email right here or a phone number. I mean, it's definitely worth a try. So let's say you found nothing here. You could not locate who is the owner of the domain name. What you could do for starters is to shoot an email to info at domain.com. And of course, we're talking about the domain name you're looking for here, because there's a big chance that the owner has set up this info at domain.com, this email for you to read them. Or maybe they used the domain for something in the past and this is the most used email for a domain name. You can also try admin at domain.com or hello or whatever. You can try some of these emails just to see if you can get a hold of the owner. And if that doesn't work, you can also try Googling the domain name and see if you can find a website that claims to own this site or in somehow if you can see if there's anything mentioned about this website anywhere where you can sort of start digging for contact information. But be aware here because there are many scam sites that will tell you that they have the contact information for any website out there or for the specific website that you're trying to get a hold of. That happened to me when I was trying to locate the owner behind this website, PassiveIncomeGeek.com. I ended up paying some dollars to this website and they claimed they knew the owner, you know, and they will start this process and nothing happened, of course, until I reached out to the info at domain.com and I got a hold of the owner directly and we were able to negotiate a deal fairly quickly. 
but many times it will take a long time and it's a hassle. And many times these owners will charge you several thousand dollars just to get a domain name and I think that's just stupid. So I think you should just spend some more time finding the perfect domain name. So as you see, you can quickly spend a lot of money with this and many premium domains will end up costing you like 10 grand or even more. But you don't have to do that because I have made this video that I linked to earlier in this video and you can still find the link up here in the cards where I teach you how to find killer domain names. There are a lot of really, really great .com domains out there that you can still find. You just need to know how to find them and what to look for. I show you some of the tools you should use and I also show you some neat tricks on how to find those secret domains that nobody has registered yet. Remember to subscribe to my channel and give this video a thumbs up and I'll see you guys next time.